Hello, hello, how are you? Hopefully your week is off to a great start. So I wanted to share something that um, came to me in such a weird way. So the other day I was in the hair salon and I was getting my hair flat ironed and TLC came on the station and it was one of my favorite songs from them. So you guys may not know this, but I'm an 80s baby. I was born in 88, I'm 33, getting up there. <laughs> but um, growing up I used to listen to TLC and all of those like fun groups. And um, I, the song that came on was What About Your Friends? And I used to love that song. So anyone who knows me knows that I am all about friendship. I'm all about girl power. I was obsessed with Spice Girls, all of those girl groups, like all of that stuff I was like, I was obsessed with just because I love girls. I love women. I love um, women friendships. I think women are so powerful. I think women are so beautiful. And I just love anything about that. So I'm listening to the song, just kind of like reminiscing, like, oh, I remember this song. And um, I have my notes in front of me. And I heard one of the, I, I listened to the lyrics and it said something like, um, what did it say? It said, one part says, um, it says, the song says, what about your friends? And then it says, are they going to be around? It says, are they going to be low down or are they going to be around or will they turn their backs on you? Now, we've all have experienced friendships of people that were just shady, people that we probably should not have given access to in our lives, which is fine because you live and you learn. But hopefully we have all found at least one friend that has been so amazing, one friend that has been closer to you than a sibling or that one friend that is like family to you. So immediately I'm thinking of the lyrics and I'm like, dang, I'm so grateful for all the friends that I have because I love my friends so much. I have such amazing um, girl group of friends. So, and now I have you guys as my girl gang. But um, I was just thinking like, wow, I have such good friends. And then it immediately made me think of a Bible verse. So I'm gonna read the verse to you guys and then I'm gonna break it down a little bit. So the verse is Luke 5, um, 18 through 20. So I have the NLT that I'm going to be reading and it says, Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to them, you said to the young man, young man, your sins are forgiven. This has, this is one of my favorite parables, or it's not even a parable, but this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, just because I think when people see this, immediately they think of the faith part of this, which I believe is totally good. But when I read this, my brain goes to like, I want a group of friends like that. Like, I need friends like this. This is crazy. These, I obviously, we don't know really a backstory about this man. We don't know if he was paralyzed because he did a sin. We don't know if he was paralyzed from birth. We honestly don't know what happened. What we do know is he had some friends that were ride or die. <laughs> we do know that he had some friends that were like, you know what? I heard there's this man here named Jesus. I heard he's been healing people. Let's go over and scoop old boy up and take him and get him healed. I don't know about y'all, but I want some friends like that. So I'm going to break down this verse a tiny bit just so we can um, kind of get to where I'm going. So um, the first thing of this verse that stood out at the beginning, it says, Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. The word that stood out to me was carrying. So I went to look up the word in the Greek or the Hebrew, and um, the word carry means also means to bear or to support or to lead. So we as women, we are to have friends or we are to be people that can bear our friends, that can carry our friends, and that can lead our friends. That is who we are called to be. So um, the next part of the verse, it says, they try to take him inside. So we as people, we have to, um, 
we have to try. We can't just give up easily. When the going gets tough, we're not to get going, right? So it says, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. So they went to the rooftop and took off some tiles. They then lowered the sick man on his on his mat into the crowd right in front of Jesus. So another thing that stood out to me was the word lowered. I honestly, um, I wholeheartedly believe that they use this terminology for a reason. I think they use the word lowered. And like I said, I don't know the backstory of this man, honestly, but it, it doesn't share much about him. But the, the term lowered, if you think of it in terms of what we are doing, think of it as the man being humbled. So when we're up high, that means we have a high, um, we have high esteem or we have high thoughts of ourselves, right? But they said they lowered him. So that man, he could have had something that was giving him, making him big headed, making him think that he deserved to be up top, but they lowered him. So I loved that it says that they lowered him to be in front of God because anywhere you look throughout the Bible, whenever someone um, is in the presence of the Lord, they always say they cry down, they close their eyes, they bow their head, they um, lower themselves. So when you are going into the presence of the Holy Spirit, you must lower yourself. You must humble yourself. So the next part of this says, seeing their face, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. So I want to just focus on this really quickly. I have a couple of tips that I wanted to share with you. And I wanted to line up. I wanted to um, correlate some scripture with that. So tip number one, we are to help others. We are to help others. We, um, when God created us, he created us for community. He created us to serve others. We're not here to just necessarily serve ourselves. So the first verse I wanted to um, discuss was Galatians 6.2. And that says, share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. So remember the law of Christ is only two. It's love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. So it's love God, love your neighbor as yourself. So this verse is saying sharing each other's burden. So as it, as your sister, when you are down, I am down. When you are down, I am there to help you. As your sister, when um, you're burdened by something, when you can't pray, I'm going to the bat for you. I'm going to pray for you because that is what we do. That is how we share each other's burdens. So then the next, um, my next point is Jesus is always available. You just have to put in the work to find him. So... I love this scripture just because there are times where I either am counseling or mentoring or coaching and um, someone will say something like, I just don't know if God's speaking to me. And I simply ask, well, did you go out and seek God first? Are you really looking for God? Or did you close your eyes while you're at a traffic light really quickly and try to get a two second prayer in and then hope and pray God was just going to answer your question like that? That's not the way God works. So right now while we are on earth right now while god is still here with us giving us his grace his mercies that are new every single day we have to seek him wholeheartedly so isaiah 55 6 says seek the lord while you can find him call on him while he is near there's going to be a time where god is not going to want any of the excuses right now god's okay with them because he hasn't returned yet but there's going to be a time where he's going to be like, get away from me. I never knew you because you had time and time and time again to seek God and you did not do it. So I'm using these verses just so I'm, a, um, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the Luke scripture. So some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. So that correlates with we are here to help others. And then the next part is they tried to take him inside, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. We have to learn to remove obstacles that are in our way. Whatever is getting in front of our relationship with Christ, it needs to go. Whether it's a man, whether it's your family, whether it's your job, whatever it is, if it's coming in between you and your relationship with Christ, it should not be there. I don't care how you slice it. God needs to be number one. So that is why I read the second verse. We need to seek God while we still can, while he's still close, while he's still readily available to us, because there's going to come a time when we're going to seek him. Um, hopefully this does not happen to any of us, but there will be a time where he's not going to be available to be sought after. Um, the next one I 
but we must humble ourselves before we can be exalted. And that is James 4.10. It says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. So like I said in that um, earlier, they lowered the friend on the mat. It says, it says, Ju -ju -ju -ju. so they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. They, then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. So you have to always come lowly, come humble before you are going to God. And then the next tip is just to be bold and unapologetic. Like if you look at this in today's time, like these people wrecked somebody's house. Like they literally went to the ceiling and started taking off tile. Could you imagine you were having your friends over and then you're like, oh, this one friend, she's really cool, she's really popular, whatever that might look like. And then so many people were trying to get in, someone started breaking through your ceiling. Like that is bold, that is unapologetic, and that is the faith that God wants us to have. God wants us to become bold. God wants us to have that authority that he gave us, that same authority he gave us in, I believe it's, um, I think it's Luke 19, don't quote me, but it's the same authority he gave us to crush serpents' heads. We have to have that same authority. God gave it to us when he left. He gave us that same authority. He says in John that you're going to be able to do these things plus more than I've done. So we have that authority. We have that boldness. We just have to activate it. And then the last tip I wanted to share is faith will take you where fear paralyzes you. We have to get rid of our fear. We have to stop doubting. We have to stop. We have to embrace faith. Faith is our foundation. Faith is where this faith is what um, our whole religion, our whole Christianity, our whole relationship is based off of. It's based off of faith. We have to stop fearing. We have to stop doubting. I always use the example of um, you jumping in a pool. Don't just dip your toe in. Jump in. Just jump in. Don't think about it. Just go. That is how you have to have faith with God. And my last verse I want to read is Mark 9, 24. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. We have to pray this prayer. Again, it's Mark 9, 24. We have to get to a point of um, where we believe. We have to believe what God says. We have to believe what he has for us. Faith is the cornerstone. Faith is the absolute cornerstone and we must believe it. So um, I just wrote a couple more things down here. You have to surround yourself with people who get it. So when God gives you a calling, when God gives you something, you have to be around the people who are going to understand. And I know not everyone's going to understand your crazy faith um, calling that God's going to give you, but you're going to have at least one person. You need to have at least one person who's going to come alongside you. Titus 2.2. 2. You need someone who's going to come alongside you. Um, and then my last note is we have to be that friend that we want as our friends. So it's easy for me to say like, dang, my friends suck, but I'm not a good friend either. That's not okay. We are what we attract. So if I'm a good person, if I'm putting out good things out there, I'm always helping, I'm always serving. Um, if I'm that type of person, I'm going to reciprocate that kind of person in my life. I'm gonna reciprocate, reciprocate good people in my life. So be that friend that you want as your friend. So be that nice person, be that loving person, be that person that just loves un un um, unconditionally. Be that person who's always going to be there for you because they know what it's like. So I wanted to um, speak on this just because that song and then it got me going about like, oh my gosh, I think I can talk on this. So I just wanna encourage you to reach out to a friend this week, send them some encouraging words. Um, if you had a falling out with someone, ask God to pull that up in your heart. Forgive that person. Um, be that forgiveness. They may not know how to forgive. Hurt people hurt people, right? So I just wanted to share this really quickly. Hopefully I didn't take too much of your time. Um, but just be that friend. Be that good friend. And remember, we have community. We have each other. Surround yourself with good people. This thing, uh, this vision God gave me, authentic culture. God gave me this beautiful community of a girl gang of women that's just supporting women, um, women just helping each other out because that's what it's about, um, going after each other, helping one another. So 
If you don't have that friend in your personal life right now, understand that you have me plus other women in the community. We'll have a Facebook group um, and things like that. I'll link so we can all get together, so we can all just work on um, work on what God has called us to do, which is serve and love one another. So um, hopefully this was helpful for you. I'll see you next week with another message. Bye, guys. <laughs>